Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and video show which brings you role models sharing their leadership lessons, knowledge, and experience. To date, we've spoken to hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you won't miss a new episode. I'm your host, Fritz Bussemaker, and today I'm delighted and privileged to have a conversation with Karen Luiter. Karen, welcome to the program. Hello, and thank you for having me. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to our audience so people have a first impression of who you are and your background. You are a full-time culinary journalist for one of the national Dutch newspapers. Since 2005, you are a full-time author of cookbooks with over uh, 20 books uh, uh, at your name and over 250,000 copies sold. You're also one of the very first uh, social media cooks, uh, uh, cooks on social media. Uh, educated in Amsterdam, translation French and Spanish, but also start your job working for the Dutch Opera. So again, uh, Karen, welcome uh, to the brand called you. And one of my first questions is, uh, I can assume an answer, but how do you make a shift from uh, opera to writing about food? How did that happen? Oh, well... Um... Uh, to start with, the opera was an accident. I had studied languages uh, and I wanted to be a translator, but in the end I thought that would be too much of a solitary job. And because of the languages, I ended up, as I said, by accident at the opera house where I spoke languages all day with singers from all around the world. And that was fantastic. But after like seven years, I, I got the seven year itch uh, problem. Yeah. Um, so I went looking for another job. Actually, I didn't start uh, the cooking business right away. I went to a publishing co company first. So I published magazines again for like six, seven years. And then the itch came up again. And then I started wondering, you know, what, what's next? Want, do I want to do something in communication or, and, um, the only thing I really cared about was cooking and making drawings. So a friend of mine said, well, why don't you start a website? Okay. website? Yeah, with recipes. And back in the day, I mean, we're talking prehistoric times, 2005, uh, food blogs did not really exist, at least not in the Netherlands. So um, um, I started with, because I had loads of recipes that I had written down on little pieces of paper that I gathered in a, in a shoebox somewhere. So I started um, writing out these recipes and put them on a blog and someone helped me with it, but it was really a very simple kind of blog. Um, and uh, uh, initially it was just me looking at it and my mother, of course, And uh, but, but soon it really started developing and I got loads of views and, um, and then I thought, yeah, well, a blog is, is all very nice and very well, but if you're in the kitchen, you need to have something on paper if you start if you start cooking. Um, so I thought I, I want a cookbook, and I I you know I I I talked to various sort of publishing companies, and they all said, well, we don't know you, you're not famous. Why don't you come back by the time you're famous? So that was the first bumpy road. Um, but in the end, I managed to convince one publisher to publish my book. And, and for me, it was magic. And I thought, this is what I really like and what I really want. So and that was book one. OK. Um, if you have to choose, is it the writing or is it the cooking? Ah. Uh, um... I think it's the combination because initially, well, when I started the blog, um, uh, I still had my job at the, at the publishing company, but I noticed that I got far more energy from my blog than from my regular job. So after a few months, I decided, okay, I'll quit my job because then, you know, I have an open mind to think what else can I do with, with this cooking business? So initially I started with catering and with giving workshops and, um, so, re, you know, the actual cooking business, not so much the writing, but teach, for, for example, workshops is something fabulous to do because you can teach people how to cook. Because by then I realized there are so many people out there who don't have a clue. You give them a red pepper and they, they don't know you have to take off the stalk and, and, you know, open it and cut out these little grains that are in there. People don't know. Um, so I could really teach them. And that was very inspiring. 
But on the other hand, catering, for instance, I noticed that I love spending days in the kitchen and cooking for friends and family. Um, but when I'm cooking for people I don't know, I just thought, yeah, you know, spending three days in the kitchen, even if, if they pay me for it, it's it's a lot of work. Why would I do that? So I I started shifting a bit because I, I noticed that you know, the actual cooking business, I'm not a chef. I've never worked in a restaurant. I, I couldn't possibly do that because that's mm -hmm. another line of work altogether. I'm much better, I found out, at uh, um, make yeah, trying to make cook uh, the, the cooking business into something that everybody can do. So it's more the, the, the teaching yeah. and, um, uh, you know, helping people understand what cooking is about and that it doesn't have to be complicated and that it doesn't have to cost you hours and hours and that you don't need fancy equipment. Um, and that's, I think, what I'm good at. And at the same time, I noticed whilst I really loved the, the, the workshops, it, it didn't pay me a living. So then I noticed it's I'm, I'm better at writing about food and then sort of helping people by my writing to get enthusiastic to go into the kitchen. And that's when I started to really focus on the writing. But obviously, I still spend days on end in the kitchen because I have to try all my recipes and try them again and try them again. And yeah. yeah. And uh, I find it funny that you, like a lot of people I've been able to talk to, uh, make exactly the same remark is uh, you're following your passion. You're following what inspires you, uh, that, that gives you energy. I think that was literally what you said yes. a couple mm -hmm. of minutes ago. Uh, and then it takes some time to find out what exactly... So you have a vague idea. I want to be more or less in this space. And then you have to experiment. Oh, that's what it's about. That's my sweet spot. Yeah. So well, when I quit my job, um, I decided, okay, I'll give it a year and I'll try anything that, you know, that, uh, that comes onto my path. So that's, you know, hence the catering and the workshops. And, but I did all sorts of things. Um, I even translated an, an English cookbook, for instance, and because I, th I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just try it. And I decided to uh, minimalize on my costs. So, you know, I, I, thought, I thought I have some savings. I can I can manage for a year without uh, uh, earning any money. Um, and I decided, for instance, a very practical thing, I decided to stop buying clothes, shoes. I didn't go to the hairdresser, you know, all these kind of costs. I thought, cut. Because I thought, okay, I really want to focus on this and I want to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, uh, after a year, I could always go back and find a job. That's what I thought at the time. But of course, I never went back to a job. And I, I love being my own boss. And yeah. But I think that's a good way to start, to just try and, and throw yourself into it and just, you know, see. Because it, it works both ways. Uh, it, it helps you to... Um, uh, see what what suits you and also it passes the time and it gives brings you money and it's you know these two things can help you just go with the flow and, and try it but it, it also brings me to a question uh, um, about success because uh, sometimes I see people uh, describe success as something superficial something you see you see so uh, the minute I'm not. I, I'm stopping. I'm stopping uh, going to the hairdressers. I stop buying new clothes. Uh, that could be perceived as your environment. Oh, she's not successful. Just look, wearing the same clothes, messy hair. Um, no, but that's for the trial period. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody is successful straight away. I mean, maybe there are people who are successful straight away, but I'm not one of them. So I think you should give it a try and start at the bottom. And you should never do something because you want to be famous or successful. You, you have to start doing something because you really love it and you get energy from it and you get loads of ideas while you're doing it. So that, okay. I, I think, should be your drive. And hey. if then success comes, that's very helpful. I because that, that gives you the possibility to, to develop more ideas and do new things. And that really brings me to a question I have on... Um, when did you first realize I'm going to be successful in this industry? I never did. No? I never did. No. 
No, because uh, I'm still, I don't consider myself a famous person, not at all. I mean, I can go to the supermarket and nobody recognizes me, which is very good because I like being, yeah. you know, unrecognized. Um, and at the same time, I, I do know I've, you know, I've, I've sold a lot of books. I have a lot of fans whom I've really helped to like cooking. And that's, that's my drive. That's, that's what, yeah, what I want. I want, I want people to email me and tell me your book changed my life because I, I hated cooking before and now I love it. And my kids love it too. And they eat everything. And that's when I think, yes, okay. that's, that's what I want to achieve. Job well done. Okay, a couple of questions on the cooking uh, itself. First of all, what's your favorite kitchen? Oh, um, uh, well, as I, I I started out my my cooking when because I my mother didn't like cooking. Sorry, mom, but it's true. She really didn't like it. So I never learned to cook from home. I, all I did when I was a, a youngster, I, I baked apple pies all day. Um, but then after I uh, uh, finished high school um, I didn't know what to do so I went one year as an au pair girl to Switzerland the French part of Switzerland and then uh, I ended up with a family of, of well a single mom with three kids and I had to cook for the kids um, and I couldn't feed them obviously on apple pies so I had to start learning how to cook so I started with cookbooks and and, and magazines and I just tried it and that's when I found out that I you know, I, I had a feeling for it. And the three kids, they ate everything, more or less. Um, so that's um, how I started developing my, my cooking skills. Um, but what was your question? <laughs> well, it's, well, it's good to know how you started to develop your cooking skills, but is there a particular kitchen where you showed it? Oh, yeah, yeah that's how I started with... the story. Kitchen, because yes. as I did, I started with the French cookbooks and the French magazine. So the, the French cuisine is really my my basis for everything. You know, the traditional dishes and, and um, the sauces and the chickens. And the, um, and then I, I, I would have added a bit of the other Mediterranean countries, so like Italian, but it, the, my basis is still very French. And whenever I have a question of how to do something, I have this very, very big sort of encyclopedic French cookbook in French, obviously. And, and then I look it up, how to do things and, you know, like how to make a traditional bechamel sauce or... Um, so French is my basis, but yeah, I like, I love to travel. And I love to eat. So wherever I go around the world, you know, I, I, I try to eat as many local things as possible. And the, the good point of living in the Netherlands, of living in Amsterdam, is that you can find all ingredients from all around the world, just in my case, around the corner. So if I want to make a Thai dish or a South American dish, I can find the ingredients and I can make it. And, and I find that fascinating. Okay. Um, and by the way, does uh, being able to uh, translate from French and Spanish, has that helped you? Uh, I would assume yes. Uh, I don't know. Reading a, well, sure. uh, if you want to prepare a meal, um, would you prefer then to use the French cookbook? So the original uh, cookbook or um, does a is a translation good enough? No, if French, I, I prefer the original version. Like, yeah, I don't buy a translated French book ever. I read novels in French. I don't read them in translation. No, that's, no, 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 that's my pride. Okay. I studied okay. French for hundreds of years. So no, no, that's not a problem. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Now, behind you, for the readers who do not understand Dutch, is the cover of one of your books, uh, Wereldgerechte Zonder Pakjes en Zakjes, which can be translated to... World dishes without any packages uh, at all. So, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, this means you've you've moved on from French cooking to um, global cooking, but also um, seems to be a message there as well. Let's cook without all the processed food. Yes. Well, actually, the the the, the French cooking started to move away very soon because what I noticed in, in Holland, for instance, um, when I go to the supermarket, I see lots of people who buy, uh, well, what, what I call the powder mixes. Yeah. Um, the Dutch don't really 
have, I think, a, a, a deep felt food culture. Yeah. I mean, of course, we have dishes we all love and we have our famous herring and our famous cookie stroke waffles and our famous snacks, the bitter balls. Um, but it's it's not really a deeply felt food tradition and a food culture. Um, and I think a lot of the Dutch don't know how to cook. So what people buy in supermarkets is these packages where you have a box and in the box are a few bags with powder mixes. And then you add water, um, some leeks and some, some uh, uh, chicken breasts, and then you have a dish and then they call it chicken tandoori, yeah. which I find, I have, I, have, oh, I have one here. I find that weird. And I started noticing and in the supermarket, lots of people buy that. And I thought, why would you want to buy a package with powder in it instead of just buying the fresh ingredients and some herbs and spices and make it yourself? So that's where I started to realize, OK, I want to because everything has been done uh, in cookbook world already. So I thought this is something new. I can I can try and help the people who buy these 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 prefab foods. Um, I can teach them how to make it from scratch with fresh ingredients. And that's what started, I think, uh, years ago, my, my third book, I think was that. And from then on, I started developing it because every time I come to the supermarket, I see that there are more products out there. Um, and I'm, I'm, I keep being surprised that people buy that. And, and it's, you know, it's more and more common knowledge uh, that all these high processed foods are not good for us. They, they really, they well, apart from the, the 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 obesity problems, they also give you heart problems and diabetes problems. And the the scientists are more and more sure about that. So I think I need to try and tell people how to eat real food. You know, like the famous Michael Pollan said yeah. all those years ago, eat food, you know, real food. Uh, and yeah. don't eat anything your grandmother wouldn't recognize. And I, I, I completely agree with that. Good I mean, moment to ask you the following question. Do you have any role models in your profession? Um, well, when I started out with my blog all those years ago, I, I loved to watch the BBC and all the cook, cooking programs. The Ready Steady Cook program. Oh, yes. Oh, Ainsley. Oh, I love Ainsley. Um, and of course, the, the, the Great British Bake Off and the Great British Menu. And um, I love Delia, uh, Nigella, uh, Jamie Oliver. Uh, and all those, I, I thought they were extremely inspiring. So I always sat you know, by the television with a notebook just to write things down. And even if it was a program with, with famous chefs, I did write down like, like taste combinations because I thought, oh, that's interesting. I can do some. I mean, and I, obviously I would never do it in the, in the, the big uh, chef's way, but I would try to tune it down to the home cook, how a home cook could do it. Okay, and I thought so, it was very inspiring. Yeah. So, um, I also hear, I'm assuming a, a cooking philosophy, rather than dumbing down a, a restaurant dish, you look, okay, how can I upgrade from a package to healthy food uh, in a normal kitchen? Yes, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not a trained chef. I said it before. I'm a home cook and I've, I've learned how to cook through trial and error and, and just trying recipes. And as soon as I start with a recipe, I start adapting because there's something I don't have and I don't want to go out again to go shopping. So I substitute it with something else. Or I think, why don't I do this in the oven? That's so much easier than in a pan because in the pan you have to keep stirring and in the oven you just, you know, shove yeah. it away and you put the timer and you go and do something else. So I'm always adapting things and trying to make things easier without um, uh, without losing the taste. Because I think food should be good and tasty. And there are so many like microwave meals out there that people eat and they think, oh, you yeah, know, it's all right. It's it's not a problem. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's feasible. And I think, no, life's too short to eat things you don't really love. It's, it's important. It's, you know, 
it, it brings joy in life, apart from a good health. I think it's important to eat things you really love every day and not just on your birthday. So that's, uh, that's yeah. my, my mission in life. And, and the, the packages help me because when I, you know, when I find, for instance, a package with broccoli soup, and it says, you know, I always read the small print in the back, which nobody does, because they put a picture on it with a big broccoli and a nice bowl of soup. And you think, oh, no, this is, this, you know, this looks healthy. And But when you look at the small print, it says there's a half percent of broccoli in it. And the rest is just salt and sugar and starch. And, and then I think, why? You know, just buy yourself a broccoli. And, and put it in a pan with, with some onions and some stock and and that's it, you have a soup. You know, sorry if I got passionate about it, but- No, no, that, that's what I love. I, I'm, I'm it is about really surprised fashion, that though, people don't great. know that, yeah. that they, they go and buy a package because it has a, a fancy picture on it. And these, that is also something we've been convinced by the food industry that cooking is very difficult and it takes a lot of time and we're all busy, busy, busy people and we don't have time to spend hours in the kitchen. So you need to buy our products because we help you. And I think that's completely false, but they've got billions and billions of marketing budgets. And you know, it gets worse and worse because now they put, for instance, on these packages, they put, because they're very concerned about our health. So they say, oh, now with 250 grams of vegetables per person, but the vegetables aren't in there. You need to buy them yourself because what you buy is just a package with a powder mix, as I said, with sugar and salt and starch and some spices. But if you, you know, if you buy some spices, these little pots yourself, you can make tons of meals and it costs you even less and it's, and, and it's tastier. So, you know, yeah. Oh, you're let's go for it. Yeah. You're very much preaching to the converted. Yeah. Uh, uh, in this, um, I'd say, endeavor of uh, writing uh, uh, for people about uh, cooking, um, ha has it been a smooth ride or has it been a uh, bumpy road? Have, have there been some mishaps where you say, oh, I should not have done this or that this is where I learned a very invaluable lesson? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I, think, I don't think things, things really went catastrophically, catastrophically wrong. <laughs> you say that. Um, no, it's it's yeah. No, that's good. Then you're one of the lucky ones, I guess. I'm not sure. No, it is. I find it some. Sometimes I find it disappointing when I, I go into a supermarket and I still all these products are still there, and then I think. What's the point of my crusade if if you know the food industry just goes on with with making all these all these products that I'm so against? Uh, and then I but then I realize no, but that I I do help people and I do make it make a difference. So it's I shouldn't see it on a global scale. I think I'm I'm happy with what I've achieved so far. But yeah, uh, maybe question them. Maybe the food industry is uh, meeting us halfway. And I don't know if this is particular something Dutch or not. But you have these offers where you get a box you can get uh, on a particular day with fresh vegetables and a recipe. Um, some argue that's not cooking. The other argue, a counter argument, well, at least it's taking away people from the packages to more healthy food. Of course, of course that's cooking. It's just that they, it's, it's a box full of ingredients and they put the recipe with it and they give people new ideas because that's what pe most people have only like, I think, a maximum of two, ten, sorry, recipes in their head that they can make from scratch without looking at any recipe and they can just make it like, you know, how to make a bolognese sauce, for instance, with pasta. Um, uh, but if you have these ten dishes you can make, you sometimes you get very tired of it. So it's helpful to get inspiration. And these boxes, I think, are a good way to to help people you know with with fresh inspiration what i do see is that well first it's 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 very expensive because it has to be you know it's it's all tailored to exact quantities 
uh, and it, it's, it, it gets brought to your own home, which also costs. But um, I do notice that people, after a while, it, they get tired of it. So then they stop it again. And But it, it's, it's, it's I a think start every, to change step, yeah. every step towards inciting people to do things themselves, and for like the COVID for that was very good because people stayed at home, they worked from home, and then they realized, oh, but you know, it's it's very nice to make your own bread or to make a, a, a stew that has to you know stand on the stovetop for for four hours. But that's not a problem because I'm home and I can see you know it's it's just easily prattling away. And um, tonight I have a I have a wonderful dinner. Um, yeah. So all, Karen, all uh, needs are... I, I love talking problems. to you about your passion about food. Um, hey, I have two questions for you. Uh, to, unfortunately, because we're running out of time for this interview. But uh, I, first of all, question is, how do you want the world to remember you? What? How do you want... Because this is the brand called you. So what is your brand at the end of the day? What, how do you want people to see you? Um, because... Well, my, my slogan is against the packages. So um, I don't want to be remembered as, as someone who's who's against something, who's, you know, always with that little finger saying, you shouldn't eat this and this is bad for you. I'd love to be remembered as someone who's uh, who's in favor of cooking, who is uh, is inspiring and who is literally helping people to enjoy food again and to enjoy cooking um, that's what I would love to be remembered as. Not at the, the you know, that lady who's always against everything. And, no. Good. Well, let's then also end on a high note because I would like to ask you, what's your signature dish? What's the dish you would recommend anybody, every, everybody try to learn to make this dish? Ooh. Oh, that's like, like asking a mother who's your favorite kid. <laughs> Uh, no, I think the, the the joy of cooking is that one day you feel like, oh, I'll just make a simple pasta. And the next day you think, oh, I'll, you know, I'll make a big pavlova with all the all the trimmings. And, and yeah. Oh, that's no. It's a fair, that's a fair answer. But uh, I, I, no, I, li I like the, the variation and the, the fact that I can one day cook Indian and the next day cook Thai. And and then I feel like something classic French and um no i've gosh i no. I, I would have to think about that come back to you about it we'll come back to that question uh in the meantime karen i want to thank you so much about uh, sharing your very obvious passion about talking about food and educating people how they can cook their own meal in a healthy way uh so uh well done and i want to thank you so much for your time and talking to the brand called you okay well as, as i said thank you for having me i'm very honored and um Let's talk soon. Thank you for listening to the brand called You videocast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.